Rhinos host Orlando City tonight at Salem Stadium. A win tonight gives the Rhinos wins in their first three home games to start the season for just the third time in team history. Rhinos soccer is next on the Rhinos Broadcast Network. play the second game of a three-game homestand tonight at Salem Stadium as Orlando City visits downtown Rochester. Good evening, soccer fans. Welcome to Salem Stadium. I'm Joe Giuliano. Our color commentator, as usual, is Mike Kerms. We've got the Rochester Rhinos in what is shaping up to be maybe one of the toughest opponents yet this season, Orlando City. They played last year as the Austin Aztecs, now they make their home in Central Florida. Mike, welcome to tonight's broadcast. And uh, we're going to take a look at a former Rochester Rhino now doing double duty with Orlando City. Yeah, Ian Fuller is the player assistant coach for Orlando City, and he has some veteran experience here, and he's going to add that experience to the game tonight for the Orlando City. He's played in Vancouver. He's played with Charleston. He was a player assistant coach with Charleston last year, and they won the championship last year. So Ian Fuller, he's a class act on and off the field. He actually got his B license while I was getting my A license last year, and he knows the game on and off the field as a coach or as a player, and he's going to add that experience on the pitch tonight. So good to see the former Rochester Rhino back in town tonight with Orlando City. For the Rochester Rhinos, coming off a 2-0 victory over Antigua Barracuda last week, and there was one player who certainly stood out from the rest. J.C. Banks, he's the, he's the player to watch tonight. Last week he had two assists against Antigua, and J.C. Banks, he adds, a lot of, he adds a lot of youth to the team, and he's been a great pickup for the Rhinos this year. And watch J.C. Banks tonight, because he's a good chance he's going to get another assist, maybe even another goal tonight. He was on the USL Team of the Week. J.C. Banks is the player to watch, and Orlando City is going to have their hands full with J.C. Banks tonight. All right, Mike Kerms, color commentator tonight. Joe Giuliano, I'll call all the action for Rochester and Orlando. It's coming up next here on the Rhinos Broadcast Network.
Welcome back to Salem Stadium. As the Rhinos coming out of the limousine at midfield, being introduced as they're getting ready to take on Orlando City in downtown Rochester. A beautiful night for soccer. I'm Joe Giuliano with Mike Kerms as the players have been introduced. And we're just getting ready for the singing of our national anthem. Let's head down to field level as we honor our great country. The singing of our national anthem this evening being performed by Miss New York and All-Star USA Junior Team member, Maravi Howell Arza. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly and the rocket's a red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there oh who say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the Rhino soccer continues. Salem Stadium, first ever meeting Rochester and Orlando. Since the start of 2010, Rochester is 11-3-3. As the limo exiting off the far side of the pitch, the Rhinos uh, coming in in style tonight, Mike, uh, out of the uh, the limousine at midfield. Yeah, that's a new one. That's a new one. Hey, always, always trying something different and uh, letting the fans see something different. I don't know who the sponsor is. It, so, good idea though to bring out that shiny new idea, new, new idea, fresh new, thinking, new idea, it's thinking a, outside the box. Coin toss is taking place at midfield. The captains are Troy Roberts for Rochester and Miguel Gallardo for the Orlando City side, formerly known as the Austin Aztecs. They're doing that next week for Barcelona and Manchester United. <laughs> the limo? Yeah, they're bringing two limos out. <laughs> it's going to have to be a lot bigger than that one just to fit the egos in, because that's going to be a great Champions League final a week from tomorrow. And as the festivities continue, the pregame festivities continue, at Salem Stadium, first ever meeting between Rochester and Orlando. If you're just tuning in, I'm Joe Giuliano, along with Mike Kerms. All the action this season. It was a gorgeous weather night, finally. Reaching the Rochester area after an extremely wet and miserable week. And the sun is finally out and shining. Hopefully that brings uh, good fortunes for the Rochester Rhinos this evening. Minutes away from kickoff. As the Rhinos are huddled, Orlando 
Breaking their huddle, ready to attack. Orlando City wearing the all red this evening. Rochester in the traditional black and white striped tops with the white shorts and the white socks. As Rochester and Orlando getting ready to meet for the first time ever in USL Pro Action. And we'll get your starting lineups out there as well. First for Orlando City, it's gonna be Gallardo in goal, the back four. Ustruck, Valentino, Bernard, and Bowden. In the midfield, Molino, Alvarez, Olam, and Neal. Up top, Griffin and former Rhino Ian Fuller. For the Rochester Rhinos, it'll be Kitson in goal. In the back, it's Roberts, Bellamy, Tobin, and Gore. In the midfield, Donatelli, Versailles, Banks, Montegalvan, Rosenland, and up top, a player who scored his first goal last week as a Rochester Rhino, Rhino Kendall Jagdio Singh. Officials today are Daniel Radford, his assistants Amanda Ross and Bill Engel. The fourth official is Stephanie Serrano. As we are underway at Salem Stadium, Rochester and Orlando. This is Neil, the left-footed Englishman on the near side, just drives one into the Rhinos 18. And Neil Kitson, who's on a good bit of uh, soccer, scoreless action. No goals against in his last 182 minutes. The last two games that Kitson has appeared in have been shutouts. He did skip the Harrisburg game on May the 10th, but he is now back in between the pipes after last week's shutout against Antigua. Mike, finally, the sun shining in western New York. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. I mean, I think we have 40 out of 45 days where it's rained, and now it's a beautiful night for this game. And Orlando's actually happy that it's a little bit cool. It's been pretty hot down in Orlando. I was talking to Ian Fuller earlier today, and he's real psyched about the weather. There's J.C. Banks off the chest. Now high little service up in the air, and foul after the ball was released by Bowden, Luke Bowden, and a talking to from Daniel Radford. As we are in the second minute and scoreless. Quick restart to TJ Gore on the near side. Gore cuts it inside. Pushing towards the middle. 35 yards out, Kenny Versailles. And Moto Galvan. Good combination passing with Donatelli. Monte Galvan to Gore, his first touch. Gives Neil just enough space. Pop it up in the air. Again, Orlando City played last year as the Austin Aztecs. And this long ball down the near flank. Griffin battling for it, but nicely shielded off the ball by Bellamy. Yeah, I mean, these two teams, this is the first matchup between the Rochester Rhinos and Orlando, but they, they're very familiar, familiar with each other with Rochester versus Austin last year. They battled right down to the wire for that regular season championship that the Rhinos ended up winning with 54 points. 16, 8, and 6 last year. As Adrian Heath has done a tremendous job, whether it's Austin or Orlando. And uh, from talking to uh, some of the players before the game tonight, the theme was pretty, uh, pretty common. This could be one of the toughest opponents of the year for the Rhinos. There's Bowden coming forward, left foot service into the box, looking for Griffin, and Neil Kitson beats everyone to the ball to make his second touch. In addition to Fuller tonight, you really want to watch the two center midfielders for, for Orlando. You got Olam in there and Alvarez in there, and they're, they're two very quality players, and they're going to try to control the match tonight. Booming ball downfield from Kitson. Bernard gets undercut, but still wins the header, and Monte Galvan. Heads that out of bounds. Throw in here for Bowden. The 22-year-old Englishman out of the Sheffield Wednesday Academy. And some and Bernard climbing up and over the back of Jagdio Singh is holding the top of his head. Kendall Jagdio Singh took a few knocks last week after scoring that goal against Antigua. And they pick up right away, Mike, with a hard challenge on the Rhino striker. Yeah, Jagdio Singh just trying, he's waiting for that ball to try to just bring it down on his chest and he just came right over the top of him. That's a bad foul. Donatelli. Bernard, the 25-year-old Jamaican with the foul. Here's the service from Donatelli. It's 
hard and low, but at the 18 and cleared away by Bowden. Now fighting for it on that far side. Foul called on Rosenland. Yeah, Donatelli's definitely not happy about that free kick, that standard situation there, and Lily's giving him some lip there, and Donatelli knows that he's got to do better with when they've got direct free kicks outside the box there. And we're coming forward with it, Jordani Alvarez. Good give and go, Alvarez intercepted by J.C. Banks. Across the field to Rosenland. Back in the middle of the park, 35 yards out. Versailles trying to thread the needle for J.C. Banks. That was a good touch, but Gore actually tracking back. And until he steals this one, good cross into the box. Gallardo is off his line, and he's backpedaling. That one just whistles wide as he may have caught the keeper napping, Mike. Yeah, well, he, he did catch the keeper napping, but it was very unexpected by both Donatelli and Gallardo. Donatelli hit that trying to cross it, and he got it with the outside of his foot. It almost curled inside in, into the far corner. Good effort there from Donatelli to put it near the frame, and Gallardo lucky to dodge that bullet. Gallardo, the 26-year-old, has played every single minute this year for the Orlando side. It's Roberts. A little bit more of a curl there, and that's going in that's, the back of the net. Gallardo didn't even touch that. That's side netting all day. There's Fuller, the former Rhino. First touch. Griffin across the field. Heavy, or a heavy ball gets through J.C. Banks. Neal with it. Lewis Neal. Alvarez bothered by Jagdio Singh, tracking back nicely. There's Marta Galvan. Rosalind, tough one to deal with there as it's taken by Ustruck. Kevin Molino cutting inside from the far flank. Still with it. Molino scored the game-winning goal last week against Pittsburgh in that one nothing win. Here he is now with the ball, middle of the park. Good idea trying to get it to Neal, but the referee's in the way. Molino, another effort from distance. That's up and over the goal. Molino scored that goal in the third minute. one nothing win last Saturday at the Citrus Bowl for Orlando City. And they've been drawing some crowds. 5,800 last week for that game in Central Florida. As Kitson has this goal kick. Anatelli outside now for Rosenland. Rosenland scored a goal last week. Hopefully many more. Here's Tobin now overlapping. Good touch into space. This cross is deflected and cleared away by Alvarez and a throw in for Rochester on the far side. You know, Tobin's starting to feel more comfortable on that outside left there. He, he's getting forward a lot more. Unfortunately, that cross wasn't what he wanted it to be, but he's getting forward more, overlapping on the outside there. And that's, how, that's helping the Rhinos get a, another perspective of, of the game with your outside backs going forward like that. It, it definitely helps Chance guys like here Jagdio. for Jagdio Singh. Gallardo's off his line. Corner kick, sorry to cut you off there, but I got a little excited. Yeah. And referee's assistant on the near side says, nope, goal kick. Fans don't like it. It's eighth minute, Rochester and Orlando are scoreless. Mike, you're yeah, the referee. It's, what it's you good, good work by Jagdeo Singh here to win that ball, keep it in bounds. That's in, and that's in, that's in. That's you in. know, it, now it's a corner kick. Yeah, it's a corner kick. Good call. <laughs> Great look at our uh, replay. Thanks to our producer, John Catalano, and his top-notch staff of photographers that are situated throughout the stadium. Looks like Pedro Ugalde may be our photographer at midfield who got that shot. There's Donatelli. Spinning, coming to the near side for TJ Gore. Couple touches from Gore. Cuts inside around Bowden. Service into the 18, and Rosenland can't get on the end of it. You know, that's good stuff by T.J. Gore. He's expected to go to the outside. He cuts on the inside, and, and all of a sudden, Rosenland wasn't expecting it, and it was not a bad cross by T.J. there. That was a great ball from T.J. Gore. His third appearance of the season for the 23-year-old out of the Uni University of Vermont. It's Gallardo. He's got a 0 0.71 goals against average. Giving up five goals in seven games played. Four shutouts for the Mexican. <laughs> he 
Here's Monta Galvan. Looking for Banks, but Bowden will just clear it with the left foot into the Rhinos half of the field. Bellamy from St. Bonaventure. Knocked off the ball by number 11, Maxwell Griffin, the 23-year-old. He's got some good numbers this year. You know, Joe, it's 10 minutes in now. You really don't got a flow of the game of who's really going to take control of the match yet. It's kind of going back and forth. No one's really keeping control of the game yet. And like last week, the Rhinos kept control of that match against Antigua. And it, it, it's a big difference tonight. And they, they just have to keep start touching the ball around the pitch and be patient. The Rhinos, good performance last week against a team that, quite honestly, was mismatched. But a good performance by the Rhinos nonetheless. Yeah, Antigua, the win. Antigua definitely didn't come with their be their best squad last week. They, and the guys that did, it was their best squad. They just didn't show up. On the road, you know, new, new climate, it got cold. So, you know, you, ne you, you never know what's going through the psycho, the psycho of a player. And they stayed in Rochester until Wednesday where they headed down to Charlotte to take on the Charlotte Eagles. And the weather didn't do them any favors for their training sessions as this throw-in is now taken by Bowden in front of the Rhinos bench. Fuller is one touch and intercepted. Monte Galvan, Donatelli. Down one thing we're not seeing like we saw last week, Mike, was that, that acreage of space in the middle of the park for the midfielders. A lot more congestion and a lot more compact play from both sides. Well, you've actually got both teams playing very similar style. They're playing in a 4-5-1. Orlando has Ian Fuller sitting back as a withdrawn striker, and the Rhinos have Donatelli sitting back as a, as a withdrawn striker. So it, they're playing two very similar styles, whereas last week you saw Antigua was playing man-to-man -man marking, and it left a lot of open space for the Rhinos. Here, it's both, two, both teams are playing zonal, and it's, uh, it, it, it's going to be a chess match, both, game, both teams going against each other. Much different look in the 12th minute right now, as that real estate will be crucial to either side success is Versailles. Is it to Bellamy? Dangerous ball. And across the middle of the field, Griffin had his back to it, couldn't get a flick on it. Bellamy will try another safe short one to TJ Gore. He's got nowhere to go as Neil and Orlando doing a nice job closing down the channels. Well, and you well, it's easy to close down the channels. The ball went from Tobin to Roberts to Bellamy to Gore. You got to skip one of those players at one point. In, but it's easy for Orlando to to shift. And same thing right here. They're shifting really easy if that goes out to Tobin. Real easy. They're shifted. They're there. They're getting in, they're getting in Tobin's face easily. It makes it it makes it difficult. You got to move the ball a lot quicker. Alvarez trying to spin away from Donatelli and wins a throw in for Orlando City. 5-1-1, one, 16 points. They are in third place in the American division. Trailing Richmond, who have 19, and Antigua, who have 18. But as I mentioned in the pregame show, Antigua no longer has those three Puerto Rican teams to, uh, to beat up on. And they're going to have a, a different taste the rest of the way as they've got 18 points, currently in second place. It's better for the league. You got more parity in the league now. You have three teams that just weren't showing up. They didn't, they didn't bring the players in that they needed to. So it, it, this is better for the league with, with the teams that they've got now. And Bowden has it now on the near side. Not afraid to play the long English style down the flank and right up the gut as he gets it, takes a touch and looks to go to Griffin. Yeah, you've got Bowden and Neil on this near side here. They're gonna play very English style. <laughs> and Bowden right off the bat, he knows the guy to go after, the guy we talked about. He got Banks right off the bat. Give him a little knock, let him know that, the, that he's there. And that's part of the game. Bowden, now Banks knows where Bowden is. Adrian Heath. Coach Austin from 2008 to 2010. No stranger to putting together a good game plan. He's done it again here tonight. Alvarez to Fuller. It's caught up in his feet. Versailles, a soft clearance. But Orlando City still with possession in the Rhinos' half of the field. Bernard. Cross to his center defensive partner, Rob Valentino. Now a possession here from... Orlando City. Coming central, now to the near side. Bowden. Fuller. That's it down in the turf. Lewis Neal. I'm cool on the ball. Neal. Fuller with it. And you can see both teams. I mean, right now Orlando's playing the style that the Rhinos yeah. want to play. This is a great match to watch because you got two teams playing very similar styles, being patient, trying to knock the ball, and trying to pick the teams apart. 
who makes that first mistake will be interesting to see as Olam has it now. And, and it's nice because now you're seeing both teams, they're starting to settle down a little bit from the excitement of the first 10 minutes and the ball's starting to get knocked around the field. Yeah, this is good soccer. Very Fuller. nice soccer. Molino. And finally it Alvarez. opens up on that far side there. And Alvarez could go one-on-one -on, -one on Tobin. There's Molino with Versailles, gets the cross away, but Roberts will win it for the Rhinos. Knocked off the ball by Griffin, working hard, corner of the 18. He was gonna turn and shoot. Just pushed a little too far in front of him. J.C. Banks trying to get Jagdio Singh down the field, but Rob Valentino, the 25-year-old. It may sound familiar to some Rhino fans. He played with Tampa last year in the USSF second division also known as the NASL. Throwing for Connor Tobin. And Mike, there's two brothers tonight on the pitch. Well, on the bench, I should say. Will Trainer, the 22-year-old for the Rhinos, and Jack Trainer, the 24-year-old for Orlando City. Let's see if they have a little sibling rivalry tonight. They can make it onto the pitch. It'd be great to see one of them as right midfielder, one of them as a left <laughs> midfielder. Trainer yet to uh, pick up any game action with the Rhinos this year. The Will Trainer, that is. Jack Diosing off the chest, spinning around. Donatelli, 35 yards out, middle of the field. Left footed shot, Gallardo diving to his left. Watches that one. Sell wide in the 16th minute and scoreless. Bob Lilly, Adrian Heath, both up and off the bench. For Lilly, his second year with Rochester. Heath started with Austin in 08, and then when the teams merged, you know, made his way over to uh, that's Orlando. A, that's a, I mean, that's not a bad shot by Donatelli. Why not give it a crack from there? I mean, nothing's been going on yet. Give it a crack from there and see what happens. Maybe open things up and force that defense to come out just a bit. As Neal gets there before Donatelli, but no one's going to be on the end of that one. Busy weekend in Rochester at Salem Stadium. Lacrosse tomorrow night. The Western New York Flash on Sunday. And wow, that's going to be that's going to there's going to be 16 women players that are going to be playing in this summer's World Cup, playing on the field on Sunday, including Abby Wambach, that is native of Rochester. That is not a game to miss. Jagdio Singh back to Rosenland, the Canadian on the near side for TJ Gore. And I'll tell you, this is not a game to miss right now either. This is a quality match right now with two very good teams. Very evenly matched. Rochester and Orlando. First meeting of the season. These two teams will play again right here on July the 3rd. Rochester will make a trip to Orlando on July the 16th, and that'll round up their Matchups for the regular season. Spinning around is Molino, taken down by Versailles. And easy call there for the official. As the Haitian Versailles takes down the Trinidad and Tobago International, Kevin Molino. Five games played, one goal for the 20 year old. Lewis Neal with the free kick, the 29 year old. Next to Ian Fuller, he's the second oldest player on the team. He'll serve it with the left foot. Into the box, doesn't get through traffic. Montre Galvan will head it up towards the middle of the field. Neil again. Another offering headed away by Roberts, but on the chest now of Molino. Shot from Alvarez off the hand of Molino and easy call for the official. And it'll be a free kick for the Rhinos. You know, Neil's free kick, similar to Donatelli's, Adrian Heath's not going to be happy with, 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 with that free kick. I mean, it, it's got to it's gotta float to somebody's head, and it was just an easy clearance for the Rhinos. And those, those are restarts that you have to take advantage of. 19th minute, Rochester and Orlando are scoreless. First meeting ever as Kitson will come across the pitch with that one. Bowden is there with the header. Neal now forward to Fuller, and Gore gets there first. Now in the middle of the field, Versailles. Ustruck wins the header. Good move by Molino, but he goes down to the turf, maybe looking to pick up a call. The Rhinos will pick up possession. 
Over on the far side, Tobin. Troy Roberts, the team captain, the team Iron Man with it to Bellamy. Good spin move here by Banks to look up and go forward. Good ball into space here for Gore. Neal chasing him down. Gore inside the 18. Gets the cross away. And no one there at the far post. Rosalind chasing it on the far side. Near the corner flag. Tried to keep it in, but Molino and Neustruck will keep possession for Orlando. You know, on that play again, it's J.C. Banks coming back, getting that ball from Bellamy, and T.J. Gore making a great run up the sideline and just taking Neal and Bowden on and just unfortunate on the cross. Donatelli on the near side now for T.J. Gore. Montegalvan, quick one touch into space. Bernard just knocking Donatelli off the ball. It looks like Banks might again maybe some freedom to kind of roam around as he's on the right side, but uh, seems to find himself on the left, in the middle. He's, uh, he's kind of been all over the place. Yeah, you, Bob, Bob Lilly gives the, ki gives the players freedom to move all, the midfielders freedom to move all over the pitch. And that, that, makes, that makes it dangerous for Orlando. But the thing is, Orlando's doing the same thing. You see Neil and Mo Molino, they're doing the same thing. They've got very similar styles in the way they play. There's the goal kick from Miguel Gallardo. Bowden. Luis Neal, quick one touch for Alvarez, Jordani Alvarez, the 26-year-old Cuban, playing in the middle of the park for Adrian Heath. Bernard gets in there strong with the challenge, wins the header, delivers an elbow as well on Jagdios, and that's going to be a tough battle all night long. I like the style that Luis Neal has, very calm, composed. He can go long, he'll go short. Done a good job mixing it up so far. Well, he's an experienced player in the league, 29 years old. You look at the rest of the players on the on the pitch, the majority of them are below 26 years old. So between him and Ian Fuller, they're the ones who are adding experience on the field. You look at the resume of Lewis Neal, just took the throw in. 70 games with Stoke City, a few other teams as well. Olam off the chest nicely for Bowden. Fuller doesn't win that challenge there. Midfield circle, Jordani Alvarez defected from Cuba in 2008. We know someone else who's done that, Eddie Sobrango. Another one too, Ray Boom Boom Martinez. Yep, yep. Into the box and Griffin looking for the one-timer. Can't turn the body and get the shot on frame. As Kitson calling out uh, some instructions for his back four. 23rd minute and scoreless. I mean, not a, not a bad cross there, but easy for the Rhinos to pick off. Talking about uh, Alvarez, defected from Cuba at the Olympic qualifying tournament back in 2008. And he has seven games played this year with one goal. Played 40 games last year with Austin, had nine goals. Not a bad number for the number 10 who makes his home in the middle of the park. The last two years, I mean, not 2009, 2010, defected, scores nine goals the next two years, making a career, making a career for himself here in the United yeah, States. Yeah, definitely built a name up for himself. Good trap by Neal, but bad touch to Fuller. There's Rob Valentino. Molino, and Olam. Then, and then you've got Olam in the middle with Alvarez from Kenya. So you know he can run all day long. Oh, look at that move by J.C. Banks. Gets around Alvarez, gets around Bowden. Top of the 18, turns on the Jets, and Gallardo comes off his line. That is a great bit of soccer from J.C. Banks. Good stuff. Now Olam on the far side to Eric Ustruck. Here's J.C. Banks making that great run up the field. Just got that ball just a little bit in front of him, but it's tough to beat five players in a match, but he was going for it. And that's why they love to see the players who go for it, as J.C. Banks did. Roberts with it to Versailles. Long ball, does get it to Rosenlin. Rosalind coming into the middle of the field, looking up. There's Banks now. 
Takes a look up. Does he turn the Jets on again? No, he's going to take a break this time. Bernard dumped by Jagdio Singh. Sent back into the 18, Miguel Gallardo. Gallardo's not happy. The bench maybe not happy with that quick delivery right back into the gut of the Orlando defense. And this one is going to reach Bernard before Jagdio Singh can get there. The Rhinos are back home again on Friday, May the 27th. The Wilmington Hammerheads come to town. 7.30 kickoff here at Salem Stadium. Olam <laughs> to Valentino. Now here's Neil who's working the far side now. Kieran Bernard, the Jamaican from the Austin Aztecs under 23 program. Has it back to Miguel Gallardo. Team captain and starting goalkeeper. Subs available tonight for the Rhinos. They include backup goalkeeper Ryan Kenny, Drew Cost, Will Trainer, Anthony Hamilton, Frank Alessi, Andrew Hoxie, and Michael Tankey. For the Orlando City side, Sean Kelly, Damar Stewart, Jerome Meshack, Wes Allen, Jack Trainer, Devarn Jorsling, and Dennis Chin. You know, you mentioned Tanky, and he was one of the guys who started last week against Antigua, and I thought he he did a, he did very well on the pitch last week. He's a very hard he's a very hard defensive midfielder, and then you had now you have Versailles out there, who's a little bit more calm, cool, and collected, but he also wins balls. He just doesn't have he doesn't have as much grit as Tanky does, but he's got a little bit more experience than Tanky does. Bowden pushing a little deeper now into the Rhinos half of the field, Alvarez. Fuller, quick one touch to Griffin, top of the 18. And TJ Gore on the left side now. They cleared away for the Rhinos. There's Olam though. Versailles sticks the boot in there. You know, Joe, you mentioned Fuller passing it to trying to pass it to Griffin there. And you know, we, we, we highlighted Fuller before the game, but Griffin has five goals in six games played this year. He leads the lead with Matt Delicott from Richmond. And he, he's he's the player that that's that's to what really to watch out for along with Ian Fuller tonight. He was the rookie of the year in the USSF second division slash NASL last season. Banks, uh, we'll see if he can do it all. Take players on and even serve a long throw and looks like he's gonna do that here from the near side. 28th minute, scoreless, Rochester and Orlando. There's Banks. At the near side of the six, Rosenlin, it sits for him. And from 12 yards out, he's gonna want that one back. You it know, just it, didn't get low enough for him to strike it on frame. Yeah, and I, I mean, you, you, you see a little bit of movement here. Banks throws a long ball, good movement by Donatelli. A little bit of a switch, and it just lays there for Rosalind, and he just kicks it right over. Ouch. He's going to want that one back. Yes. The one thing we miss on the throw-in is that J.C. Banks has a foot on the field. Yeah. <laughs> and the referee's assistant is two yards away, not even. You know, and it's a good battle yeah. by Versailles there, which which allow, didn't allow Orlando to head the ball easily out. If that ball can just drop another few inches. Well, of course, if it could drop a, little, a few more inches, but There's really, Rosalind's got to try to get his body over that True. and strike True. that, but he's going to want that one back. Look at this. Bernard has been mugging Jagdio Singh all game. This is the third or fourth foul by Kieran Bernard, who obviously wants to send a message to the Rhino striker. I mean, and Jagdio Singh, he, ma he makes great diagonal runs. He makes great runs up the field, and Bernard doesn't even play the ball. I mean, that's clearly a yellow card. I think the next one is going to be a, uh, a booking for Bernard. He's been giving Jagdio Singh the business all night long. And we're 29 minutes in. And I think Bernard's got no choice there because Jagdio Singh is going to turn the corner. Well, I mean, they know Jagdio Singh scored a goal last week. Donatelli, the service off of a Orlando player should be a corner kick. And it is on the far side. As Gallardo tried to quickly clear the ball. Not sure what his intention was, but the referee coming over, talking to a few players and making sure everything is okay. 
end result is a corner kick for the Rhinos on the far side. This will be... And this is, this is a much better free kick by Donatella. And these are the restarts that Coach Lilly likes to see. And, uh, I mean, just crashing from the far post, that's, that's a great cross. Rosenland, far side corner. There's the delivery. And headed away by Alvarez, near side of the six. They need to continue to execute on those restarts. And a corner kick is a, is a restart that, that the Rhinos really want to work on and make sure that they get that ball in the, into the 18. Goal kick coming up here for Orlando City, who don't have much time in between games, as they'll play Harrisburg at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And it looks like they're making an early sub here. Number six, getting ready to check in for Trainer. Adrian Heath. Jack Trainer was warming up. Ready at kickoff as well, so we'll see who he gets the nod for. As Adrian Heath forced to go to the bench early on. He's going to replace Fuller. Ian Fuller. Very interesting change here as the player assistant coach is going to come off. And speaking with Ian before the game, obviously he's not going to tell us that there's an injury, but he's the one who looks like he's going to come off. As Neil has it now. Left foot chip into the box and flicked over the end line by TJ Gore. And Fuller was there. That, that could have been Fuller's opportunity right there. Jack Trainer, number six, the 24-year-old out of Notre Dame. Ian Fuller will be the player who comes off. Looks like they're going to keep Fuller in maybe for this restart as he's got uh, the physique and the big target in the box as Neal will take the corner kick from the far side. There's the delivery in swinging service. Through traffic, the punch by Kitson. Alvarez, the rebound! And that's headed out and over the goal by Troy Roberts. He took a rocket off the top of his head. Wow, and what a strike by Alvarez there. I mean, kept it low, and Kitson just came out, and he saved that. Great cross here. Kitson comes out, and then Alvarez just releases it. There's Alvarez on the near side now. This is the second corner kick of the game for... Orlando, another service into the box, flicked into space there, and it's headed up and over the goal by Kieran Bernard as Fuller did a good job to get that initial flick on it as he's going to come off now. This change coming up in the 33rd minute. But that's a nice set piece by Orlando there. You can see why they wanted to keep Fuller in the match for those two corner kicks. Well, he's always dangerous on set pieces with his height out there. So mentioned it, Jack Trainer, the brother of the Rhinos, Will Trainer, the older brother, two years, setting those players apart. As Fuller comes off, he's played 33 minutes. Looks like he's uh, be favoring the right leg, but that is just speculation at this point. So what a flick by Fuller there, and almost, I mean, just right there. Bernard was right there, the guy who should have a yellow card by now, but he was right there, far post. Great set piece. Neal, left-footed shot. And that's up and over the goal. Lewis Neal getting more involved here as the game goes on. We're in the 34th minute. It is scoreless from Salem Stadium. Joe Giuliano and Mike Kerms. Third home game of the year for the Rochester Rhinos. First one was a 1-0 victory over a less than impressive Charleston Battery team. And a 2-0 victory last week over Antigua. You know, they've moved Neal into that, into that role that, ne that Ian Fuller was playing. And Neal, Neal is a little bit more active tonight. Fuller could have been a little bit injured. But Neal's going to be active. And he's going to cause maybe a little bit more problems for the Rhinos and Mato Gavan and Versailles in there than Ian Fuller was. Spinning at midfield is Rosenlin. Opened his 2011 scoring account last year and he stripped of the ball. Molino taken down and Bellamy for you struck on the far side. Alvarez, first touch is off the mark and Olam into the 18. Kitson 
Now to Tobin on the near side. Tobin and Gore have switched sides. Tobin now on the right side of defense. Jagdio Singh, he just cannot catch a break against Kieran Bernard. Tobin up and over the head of Bowden. Throwing here for Trainer. It's off the face of Neil. Jagdio Singh is dumped again. Alvarez splitting two defenders in his pass forward. Taken away nicely by Bellamy. Trainer. Bad pass here by Olam. Rhinos with a chance to come forward. Donatelli. Montegalvan. Rosalind lays it off softly. Molino steals it. Away from Roberts. Far side of the 18. Low cross. Bellamy is there to poke it away with the right foot. Wow, and Molino wants that back because there was there was two Orlando City players in the center in the in the in the 18 and only two Rhinos players. And if he crosses that in the air, there's an opportunity for Orlando. There's Olam. Takes a look up, couple touches, still with it. Ustruck to Neal. Orlando knocking it around here. Ustruck with a corner of the 18. Hard tackle there. Versailles comes and wins it for the Rhinos. And Bernard from behind. This is getting ridiculous. It's got to be a yellow card, and he's going to have to watch it now. 36th minute. First yellow card of the game. No surprise going to Bernard. As it's getting almost ridiculous. Well, I mean, Jagdio Singh's starting to put a little bit of a target on himself. And unfortunately, that's the way the game is played sometimes. When you when you start scoring goals and you've got speed, they want to slow you down some, somehow, and they're going to sacrifice the yellow card. Good to see. But he's up, and he, he's, he's going to fight. There's a look at uh, the player assistant coach, Ian Fuller, with some ice. Looks like it's on the left calf. As he uh, played again 33 minutes tonight. Great shot from across the field. Again, Pedro Ugalde running that camera. Good stuff there on the uh, far side of the pitch. Roberts. Rosalind is dumped by Ustruck, and he wanted to call the two number eights battle, and it'll be a throw in for Orlando City. 37 minutes in, and scoreless from Salem Stadium on a day that's finally not raining in Western New York. Hopefully many more to come here for the Rhinos 2011 season. Well, Joe, if you recall, last, last week, yeah, last week we were making fun of uh, one of the Antigua players. Had his long tights on on his legs, and uh, he was the smartest player at the end of the night. He was the smartest player in the building, no doubt about it. As Remember the fog and the rain, the Temperature wind. dropped 20 degrees. Miserable night for soccer. All right, here's Banks now on the far side, one-on-one. You -on -one. struck. He wins that battle. Neal. Very talented left-footed player has the ball now. Molino is down. So he's holding his left knee or left shin. As the referee takes a look at him, Neal will knock it out of bounds. As Molino not calling for the trainer yet. As he is still sitting down, taking a look at that left leg. And don't forget the Rochester Rhinos once again home turf on Friday, May 27th, 7.30 kickoff. The Wilmington Hammerheads come to town and there could be some payback on the line as Rochester lost to the Hammerheads 1-0 on April the 17th. So revenge on the line next Friday, the 27th, call 454-KICK. Or visit Ticketmaster.com for your tickets to see Rochester and Wilmington next Friday here at Salem Stadium. We are back underway. Molino is okay. And Jagdiosing has the ball for the Rhinos. Bernard for the first time not all over his back. Jagdiosing down the far side looking for TJ Gore. Runs into Olam and goes down. Griffin. Our side for Molino, and he can't keep it in bounds. It'll be a throw-in for Rochester. You know, Joe, we have um, we have one of our very own. We're doing a charity event here in Rochester on Saturday, July 23rd. 
And tell us more. And that charity event is for the Wilmot Cancer Center at Strong. Uh, Joe Mercik, one of, one of the players that played in the late 90s, early 2000s, was diagnosed with testicular cancer back in October of 2010. He had surgery in November, and uh, thankfully he is okay. And he is going to uh, be running, having a charity event. Him and Bill Sedgwick got their heads together, and they're running a charity event on Saturday, July 23rd. Our thoughts and our prayers are, are with Joe, and it's great to hear. You, you know, see him down below us. He looks he looks good. He looks real healthy. And he strong. looks great. I mean, he went through chemotherapy from December to February, and he did all of his treatments at the Wilmot Cancer Center, and that's what the charity event is for. It's not an easy road, and we wish Joe Mercik and his family the best. More details, Joe? I'm going to be emceeing the event. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. And we're, and we're going to have a bachelor auction That's for <laughs> the Rhinos. How could you emcee if you're going to be in the auction? I am not going to be in the This is just getting to the point of rubbish as the Englishman, Bowden, is now sent into the books, 41st minute. J.C. Banks took it from three different sides on that play. Yeah, I mean, J.C. Banks is working hard. So you got two players that really showed up last week, J.C. Banks and Jagdeo Singh, and they're, they, they've put targets on their backs. Just like Griffin. Griffin's got a target on his back as well. That is uh, Orlando trying to slow the pace down. J.C. Banks last time tore through two or three defenders, and that time they let him know that the ball might make it through, but you're not. Tough ball from Monte Galvan, and Trainer comes in hard with a challenge. Referee again is Daniel Radford. He's going to start blowing that whistle as uh, he's going to take control of this game. Banks, corner of the 18, still with it on his left. Still in traffic, taken down in the box, and there's no call. The Reynolds bench can't believe it. Roberts, his low cross intercepted by Neal. J.C. Banks has been a handful. And this is an opportunity for a counterattack here. Tobin with it now, middle of the park. Donatelli turns into traffic, but luckily ends up on the foot of Jagdeo Singh. Taken away by Olam. Drives this one up to midfield. Bellamy gets in there with a hard challenge over the back of Griffin. Roberts lays it back to Kitson. It's going to get there. And Kitson takes no chances, bombs it downfield. You struck coming down the far side. We're in the 43rd minute. No score. Downtown Rochester. Orlando City and the Rochester Rhinos. There's Alvarez to Olam. They'll try the near side. Trainer with it. 24 year old, former draft pick of the Red Bulls in 2009. High up in the air. Jagdeo Singh and Bernard fighting for it, and Donatelli comes in. And Mike, let's take a look at that uh, replay. J.C. Banks in the box. Yeah, he's working hard again, and he, he just plays another fake, and it looks like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, I mean, he gets him. Neil gets him. And it's clear. I mean, right here, he, he gets all leg there, and J.C. Banks... I mean, he does. He's, there's no dive there. He's, just put, he's putting himself into the game, and Neil got him. You can see that right leg gets shoved out from underneath him. And Orlando consider themselves lucky not to be giving up a PK there as the replays have been outstanding tonight. Thanks to our producer, John Catalano. You know, I think the ref's making a decision there that maybe J.C. Banks didn't have a chance to go to goal there. But, I mean, it, it, it's quite obvious that it's a penalty kick. And he's, he's got to have a little bit more guts there to make that call. Headed away there by Trainer. Here's Versailles, right-footed shot. Blocked by Valentino. Rosenlin on the near side, working hard for Tobin now. 45th minute. 
And this one gets through the legs of Versailles. Chance now for Molino to push forward and Gore is tracking back hard. Plays it back to his goalkeeper, Neil Kitson. Kitson just clears it over the far sideline. Neil Kitson, the 25 year old, a 0.80 goals against average this year. Coming into the game, 182 minutes of scoreless soccer. So Mike, add the 45 and uh, you could figure that out for us. 227. Thank you. Good stuff for Kitson so far. Griffin, trying to check back for it. There's Jagdio Singh, turning the Jets on. Bernard coming over and he wins the ball. That was a clean challenge there by the big central defender. Bellamy, fans wanting the Rhinos to go forward, but they'll keep possession in their own half. One minute of stoppage time called for. Neal with some space to turn and look up. Bowden, back to his fellow countrymen. Neal now to trainer. Donatelli, Rosenland on the near side. Three red jerseys in front of him. He's forced to go back and regroup. Tobin. Now Bellamy. Tobin with the right foot down the near sideline. Morto Galvan. Good touch. Handball will play on. Jagdio Singh and Bernard still fighting here. It has been a physical battle with those two tonight. Into space on the near side into the 18. Rosenlin tries to chip it over Olam. He can't. Still has it though. Push down from behind and it'll be a free kick. In stoppage time, a good opportunity here for the Rhinos. And that's not a that's definitely that's not a good foul by Olam. He's got to be smarter there. He's got to just contain him. But what a great ball by Versailles. Good vision. And unfortunately, Tyler Rosalind didn't have the wheels to get there, and Olam caught up to him. Unless, otherwise, Rosalind's going one-on-one -on -one with, with the keeper. But bad foul by Olam gives a gives a clear opportunity for the Rhinos on this restart by Donatelli. He's got to make this count. All right, stoppage time, two-man wall. Service into the box. Headed straight up in the air by Olam and into the arms of Gallardo. And that'll do it for the first 45 minutes. And it's scoreless at Salem Stadium between Rochester and Orlando. And that was an excellent restart by Donatella, and they gave them a chance there. Could have been uh, a lot worse for Orlando, giving up a bad foul there in what's really turned into a... Uh, a physical first half, Mike, at, uh, at Salem Stadium. So 45 minutes plus one minute of stoppage time are in the books. One substitution was made in that game for Moreno, or in the game so far, Ian Fuller was, uh, was taken off. As the Rhinos and Orlando City head to the dressing room and look to prepare for battle. In half number two, we'll see what adjustments are made by uh, either side. As if you're just tuning in now, Joe Giuliano and Mike Kerms on the call tonight. As we're waiting for Kendall Jagdio Singh to make his way over to midfield. And Mike, that's gonna be an interesting interview. I wonder what he has to say with, uh, with the uh, challenges he's been receiving from Bernard tonight. Yeah, he's been getting beat up a little bit and we, he's making great runs and he, he's working hard. But like I said, he might have a little bit of a target on his back. Jagdio Singh getting, uh, getting uh, all geared up and ready to go here as we played 45 minutes and are scoreless. Okay, so we're waiting for Jagdio Singh, Mike, but for Rochester, good opportunities. JC Banks again kind of picking up where he left off last week. Yeah, he, he's getting himself into the action again, but he, he's also got a target on his back, and they've, they, they've been taking him and Jagdio Singh out of the game, trying to get them out of their get them out of their game, get their psycho out of the game, but they're, they're, they're doing a good job sticking, staying in the game mentally. And speaking of Kendall Jagdios, let's go down to midfield and speak with the Rhino striker. Kendall, welcome to the halftime show, and uh, congratulations. Your first goal as a Rochester Rhino last week. Uh, feel good to get that off your back and, and finally start scoring some goals? Yeah, I mean, we played six games, and I think I was a bit unlucky to get to come off the mark early, but 
you know, the game against Antigua was a good game for us for a good start. And um, we're just looking forward to this game now. I think the game against Antigua was the pass. And, you know, this Orlando team is a very good team, tactically. So the main focus now is on getting a good positive 90 minutes out of this game. Yeah, Kendall, it seems like that that you've got a little bit of a target on your back. How, I mean, how, how do you feel out there every time you get the ball? Um, Well, every time I get it, you know, they're quick to close down and mark. But I'm up for the challenge, you know, and as I say, the game is 90 minutes, so they got to... They got to contain me for 90 minutes and I got to try my best to, to deny their, their, you know, their chances and, and come up with a goal this game. Kendall, how do you feel tonight? I mean, you're, you're, you're the lone forward up there in a 4-5-1. How do you feel the midfielders are supporting you tonight? Um, I, I mean, on top of load is, is a bit of hard work, but, you know, it's, it's, it's for the team, you know. My desire to work hard is for the team. And at the end of the 90 minutes, I think we, we, our aim is to be successful. You know, so we all work hard together as a team, and I think the midfield is doing a great job in joining. So we got 45, 45 more minutes, you know, and we we going out for the win to bring the, 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 the three points home to the Rochester Rhinos fans. All right, Kendall. So one last question: you you you've been you've scored goals against the Rhinos in the past, and how does it feel to be in Rochester with with this fan base here and the playing in a soccer specific stadium? How do you like being here in Rochester? Well, the. Uh, when I arrived, you know, I had a, a warm welcome and I uh, loved the atmosphere with the fans, the coaching staff, and, 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 and everybody gave me a warm welcome here at Rochester Rhinos. As, as for the past with Puerto Rico, that is the past, and um, 2011 is all about Rochester Rhinos. So I'm looking to contribute as much as I can contribute to the team and hopefully win a championship. Well, Kendall, your first goal last week against Antigua, hopefully the first of many as a Rochester Rhino. Thank you very much. Thanks. Kendall Jagdio Singh, the striker, number nine for the Rochester Rhinos, joining us on the halftime show. 45 minutes are in the books. It is scoreless from Salem Stadium, Rochester and Orlando on the Rhinos Broadcast Network. And welcome back to the Halftime Show. Rochester and Orlando are scoreless at Salem Stadium. Joe Giuliano, Mike Kerms looking for our first goal of the game tonight after 45 minutes of play. Mike, let's take a look at the action. Highlights from half number one. J.C. Banks picked up where he left off. But uh, here's a look in the first half for Donatelli. Mike, shot, cross. I guess it doesn't matter. It almost finds the back of the net. Yeah, Donatelli does a great job reading the play, and he goes across that, and he hits it with the outside of his foot by mistake, and, and it goes over Gayard, and it could have gone into the upper 90. You can see Gayard doesn't even get a chance on it. He was backpedaling, and he was in no man's land there, as it could have found the back of the net. Donatelli again 
And Mike, you like what he makes uh, his choice. You like his decision here. Yeah, absolutely. Why not take a chance? It, it, it's early in the match, and we and the Rhinos really didn't get it, haven't had a shot on net. And Donald Telly, he, he can he can lace one from there. So he laces, tries to lace one with his left peg, doesn't get enough on it. And JC Banks beats one, beats another. Just so entertaining to watch. Yeah, he's got speed, and he starts that beyond midfield. And if he if he can get that goal, it reminds me of some goals that I've seen in the past from the Rhinos. And he, he, he makes a great run here, and he dribbles one. And then here comes another one, makes a nice little dip, two. And then here comes another one, three, and pushes a little bit too far past them. And Ustruck was actually there to cover it. But that's 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 it's tough to make a run like that and score a goal. That is a 21-year-old rookie for the Rochester Rhinos. It's a long throw from J.C. Banks and Rosenlin. Good opportunity for him. Yeah, and you can see J.C. Banks steps on the field there, but Versailles does a great job being right on Olam there, not allowing Olam to clear the ball easily, and Rosalind wants that one back. You can you can just see his head is down, and he wants them back. The yep. battle of Bernard and Jagdio sing. It got nasty at times. Bernard picked up a yellow card after several fouls, but Orlando, Mike, they knocked on the door as well. Yeah, and, and here, here's one that's just laced and... and cleared by Roberts there, but it, it was just a great lace there by Alvarez. Roberts sacrificing as he gets his noggin on that one, as it was a rocket from Alvarez. Ian Fuller, former Rochester Rhino, you can see why they kept him in on these corner kicks. He was the, the main target at first. Yeah, and, and although Bernard, Bernard was chippy the entire half, that's a great setup, that's his great, great set piece, and Bernard is crashing and almost puts that one away. Kitson watches that one sell up and over the goal. More chances coming up here in half number one as the Rhinos. Kitson looking a nice touch here. Neil comes with it. Not afraid to go from distance. I thought Neil had a good first half, whether it was on the outside or kind of shifted into that role of uh, Ian Fuller. Yeah, I mean, two of the most dangerous players on the pitch tonight, Neil and Griffin, and, and Neil does a great job. He's dangerous. He makes things happen. Lewis Neal, consider yourself lucky. That's not a PK. Yeah, very lucky for Orlando here because J.C. Banks doesn't have a chance. The refs ha has, to, has to have more guts to make the call here, and it, it's clearly a foul. J.C. Banks may not, ha may not have a chance on goal there, but the ref has to have more guts to make that call because that was a clear foul in the 18-yard box. Yeah, J.C. Banks, uh, extremely dangerous. Uh, Jag Dio Singh has been getting manhandled by Bernard, but... It he seems to have that positive, upbeat attitude still. Yeah, he has that upbeat attitude, and it's the right attitude to have, but that's the way that this game is played in the league, and finally we're seeing a match where the game is chippy, people are getting stuck in, it's exciting, It's there, there's players, they're knocking the ball, and it's two two teams playing two formations of a 4-5-1, and it's a chess match out there. So it, it, it's an exciting game to watch tonight. It has been two very entertaining teams as they're two of the top teams meeting here tonight in downtown Rochester. So after 45 minutes of play, we are scoreless at Salem Stadium on the Rhinos Broadcast Network.
five, four. No score after 45 minutes of play. Shots favoring the visitors, Orlando City. Not much more to tell you, but Mike, a very special announcement. Yeah, Joe. Mer we were talking about Joe Mercic having testicular cancer. They're doing a benefit at Monroe's in Pittsburgh on July 23rd, and we'd like to see a lot of the Rhinos fans there. They're going to be auctioning off the bachelors from the Rhinos, and it's going to be a it's going to be a fun again event. Who's the MC that night? The MC that night is Mr. Michael Burns. <laughs> so how funny is that? That is going to be one to videotape. Joe Mercic. It's a great cause. Uh, be sure to support and, that uh, that cost. And the cost is twenty dollars presale. It's twenty five dollars at the door, and it, it's going to be a good v event for the Wilmot Cancer Center. And uh, Joe Joe Mercic went th through through uh, chemotherapy there, and uh, he's doing very very well. He looks great. We saw him here tonight. Best wishes to Joe Mercic. Second half is just around the corner. The Rhinos and Orlando are scoreless after forty five minutes of play on the Rhinos broadcast network. Salem Stadium, second half just about to get underway. Orlando City making their way onto the pitch. The Rochester Rhinos yet to uh, come out of the dressing room. And while we have a moment here, let's get you ready for the next Rochester Rhinos home game. On Friday, May 27th at 7.30, the Wilmington Hammerheads come to town here to Salem Stadium as Rochester lost on April the 17th to Wilmington 1-0. See if Rochester can uh, avenge that earlier season loss. As Mike, we're looking across the uh, Orlando City lineup. One change was made in that first half. The 33rd minute trainer came on for Fuller. And looking to see if any more players have uh, entered the pitch for Adrian Heath's side. As Neil talking with uh, his head coach. Looks like it's going to be the same 11 that left the pitch to end half number one. And they made a little bit of an adjustment there by putting Neal into the center of the park when they took out Ian Fuller. And I think Neal's a little bit more mobile than Ian Fuller was. But Ian Fuller de definitely had an injury that uh, that was plaguing him a little bit. A little chill in the air now as uh, Rochester finally 
Coming out of the dressing room, Donatelli, Moto Galvan, the first two field players out, and Kitson follows them. As the crowd getting ready for second half action at Salem Stadium, Rochester three and three. They've got nine points. Orlando five, one and one, 16 points. Orlando third place in the American division, Rochester is in second place in the National Division. The LA Blue is leading the way with 13 points. So Joe, back to that back to that charity event. I mean, the, the slogan is off of the turf, out on the town with the Rhinos. And it's a night with the Rhinos to benefit the Wilm Wilmot Cancer Center. And uh, it's to benefit that center and honor and former Rhino, Joe Mersick, and uh, cancer survivor Joe Mercik who just uh, finished chemo in February 2011 and uh, seeing him tonight he looks fantastic and he got diagnosed back in October and uh, hopefully he's uh, he's free and clear of cancer he got it removed in November and uh, he's looking great and uh, it, it, we're very happy to hear him we've got a little bit of network of uh, all the former rhinos on Facebook and we talk about it and uh, hopefully we get some former rhinos here to uh, help in the cause as well and uh it, 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 it's an exciting. It, it's exciting for us to be able to help the Wilmot Cancer Center. It starts on. It is on July the 23rd. It's a Saturday. It starts at 5:30, and again, it's at Monroe's in Pittsburgh, on of course Monroe Avenue. So a great uh, benefit there. That's the day after the Rhinos host the Pittsburgh Riverhound. So a good weekend of soccer and fundraising at the end of July. Daniel Radford, the referee. Heading over to midfield. Rochester will kick off. They'll be attacking the goal to our left. As the sun has set, the lights are booming. And we're ready for some soccer in downtown Rochester. Jagdio Singh and Donatelli get us underway for half number two. And this long ball right off the boot of Monte Galvan will be Taken inside the 18 by Gallardo. Resetting your subs available tonight first for the visitors. Backup goalkeeper Sean Kelly. Defenders Damar Stewart, Jerome Meshack. Midfielders Wes Allen, Devarn Jorsling, and forward Dennis Chin. Subs for Rochester. Backup goalkeeper Ryan Kenny. There's a chance here for Rosalind. We'll get back to the subs in a minute. For Tobin now, back to Montegalvan. Looks up, he's got some space. Back to Tobin. Just tries to get there before Molino and can't. Ustruck will head it, gets it back from Molino now. Bad giveaway though. Into space for Montegalvan, Valentino is there first. Back and forth, ball being given away, given away. Jagdio Singh with it. To Rosalind on the near side, cross is deflected. And Valentino will clear it up towards midfield. Griffin is there, but it's over his head. Roberts picks it up. Subs available for Rochester. Cost. Chance though for the Rhinos in the 18 again. As Bernard, his head ends up in the side of Tyler Rosalind's. Looks like the, right, the back side of Rosalind's head took the brunt of that collision from Bernard. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great flick by Donatelli there, and you can see Bernard puts everything into it, and just, uh, you know, Tyler, Rosalind, and Bernard, they, ju they just bo both went for the ball, and those are players that want to win this match, and un unfortunately, Bernard got the worst of it, and you can see it right here from the front side. Totally focusing on the ball, doesn't even see Rosalind. Oh, I think you saw blood right there. I think there. we did see it just kind of cut open as he was down, pounding on the turf. Hate to see any sort of injury like that. As it'll be a, a few moments here before we get underway, the trainer out and taking a look at Kieran Bernard. So subs available defensively for Orlando are Stewart and Meshack. As Bernard laying down on his back. Looks like it's going to be Stewart who comes in. 
They didn't waste any time getting him up and off the bench. So he looks like he's got his uh, jersey on and ready to go. Bernard, the 25-year-old from Jamaica. Still down on the turf inside his own 18 as he went up. Very strong, very physical for a header. Got the ball and then on the follow through ended up colliding with Rosenland. Bernard gets a round of applause. He is up and on his own feet. The trainer walking off slowly now. The issue is, uh, is there a cut? Is there a concussion? As Adrian Heath trying to get the word, can he stay? As look at that lump right under his right eye. Wow. Yeah, I, th I he made a he may have gotten knocked out a little bit. So S slight concussion. Ten players for Orlando until they can get this change made. You can see he's a little shaky. Long throwing on the near side. Headed away by Ustruck as we're back underway. That was a two or three minute delay there, but good thing that Bernard is okay. Inside the 18, Roberts can't keep it in bounds. As it is going to be Stewart who comes on, Mike. You know, that's a great ball by J.C. Banks. That's a, a, a little bit unselfish by Donatelli. I think Donatelli's got to bring that down by himself and try to one, and, and then his second touch needs to be a strike with his left peg. This change will be made in the 50th minute. Bernard getting looked at again by the official, or the, uh, the trainer. Damar Stewart coming on for Kieran Bernard, and we'll see if he brings the same physical presence for Jagdio seeing to deal with as he is knocked down again, and he's going to pick up the foul here. Alvarez called for the foul. Tobin. Rochester playing with the man advantage right now as Bernard is on the sideline. Stewart now checking in at the fourth official's table. Top of the 18, Rosenlin and Jagdiosin get tangled up. And that's where the Rhinos attack will stop. Molino held up there by Jagdiosin. You know, I almost think that Tyler Rosalind has to strike that ball off of Jagdio Singh's foot. I mean, just go for it. Rather than trying to make the perfect goal and trying to get it in the 18 and knock it around the 18. Mato Gavan hits a great ball to Donatelli, who dummies it. Jagdio Singh one times it a little bit to Rosalind. It was a little bit of a mistouch, but still Rosalind's just got to go right through it. Stewart Mike is on now, playing central defense, replacing Bernard. So... Fellow countryman from Jamaica replacing Kieran Bernard. So two changes made by Adrian Heath, both of them due to injuries. The first one, a left leg injury to Ian Fuller. Not sure if that was a recurring injury, but uh, he was off in the first. Look at this again by J.C. Banks, though. Through midfield to Rosalind on the near side. Banks. Good idea trying to get it to Rosalind. He can't. It's broken up by Valentino. Lavon's header to Bellamy is set straight up and deep into the Orlando half of the field. Banks and Ustruck fighting for that one. Ustruck wins that physical battle. A little shove down to the turf as well for good measure. And Gore on his horse chasing this one down. Scoreless, 52nd minute. The Rhinos and Orlando City. Versailles and Gore can't connect on that one. Here's Alvarez. Jagdio Singh stripping the ball from Olam. On the far side, he's going to have to hold it up. He's got no one up in support. Rosenland coming over. But Jagdio Singh will just whip this one into the box. Gallardo, no chance or no problem there to scoop that one up. Valentino, you struck. Stumbles on the ball. Rosenland will play it for Montegalvan. Back outside for Rosenland. There's Tobin. Middle of the park, Versailles. 30 yards out. Looks up. Into space. Trying to thread the needle there for Jagdio Singh. Just too much traffic. Neal. 
Motogavan gets the poke on it, and Jagdio Singh unable to pounce on the loose ball. Gallardo holding it up and slowing things down for Orlando City, who are unbeaten in their last six games. After dropping their season opener, they've gone 5 0 and 1. Bellamy's header. Like the loss of Bernard, who seemed to be that anchor in central defense. We'll be interested to see how that affects the Orlando defensive scheme. Yeah, I mean, you've got a guy there now, Stewart, who, who's also played five games this year, who's also going to be a hard Jamaican back, who's going to get stuck in. So, you know, the, the one thing with Bernard was he, he he's a risky player, and he had a yellow card already. You can see that he continued to get stuck in during the match. So he was a little bit of a risk as well as being such a strong player back there. That's a good point. Picked up a yellow card in the 36th minute. And he didn't stop the way that he was playing. He kept playing that, that game of uh, getting stuck in hard and some, you know, almost late tackles. 54th minute. Both teams trying to penetrate. Time for a goal, I think, Mike. Yeah, there, I mean, you, there's not a lot of movement by the Rhinos, right? You can see they're all standing right now. You can see Monogavon, Versailles walking, J.C. Banks is walking. Donatelli's trying to show, and, and it's just the guy that's got the ball. They're not playing one to two, they're not playing two to three steps ahead of the match right now. Banks, and he gets that ball knocked away by Jack Trainer. Throwing about 40 yards out on the far side. Donatelli off his thigh. Olam pokes it in there, and coming away with it now is Bowden. Here's Bowden's first touch in half number two on the far side. Whips it off of J.C. Banks. Now plays it forward to Lewis Neal. You struck. Well, it's Trainer. I'm sorry, on the far side. Stewart, driven ball forward for Bowden. One touch, middle of the field now. Valentino on the ground. Molino's got some space to turn and look up. Into space for Griffin. Corner of the 18. Griffin tries to cut around Tobin, and it'll be a corner kick here for Orlando as Michael Tankey will be coming on now for Rochester. You know, we're 10 minutes in two, I mean, 10 minutes into the half, and it's really the first opportunity that Orlando's had to get into the, uh, their offensive third. The one thing with Tanky coming in, I, I, I think it may be for Versailles, because you saw earlier Versailles just had a missed touch to the outside, and then you saw Lily, Coach Lilly start to think, okay, what, what, what can I do here to change things up here in the center of the park? Lewis Neal, corner kick from the near side. Referee talking to the uh, players inside the 18 will get us underway now. There's the service. Kitson with the punch. Out to the top of the box. Neal. Alvarez. Back to Neal. Good ball into the space here. Right footed chip into the box. Kitson bobbles that one and picks it up on the one hop. Looks like another change also going to be coming in. Hoxie will check in for Bob Lilly. You know, both teams with, st with standard situations. And, and Neil puts it a little too close to Kitson again. He's got to get that between the 6 and 12 and really drive that ball in because it was great movement by Orlando City in the, in, in the 18 during that corner kick. 57 minutes and scoreless. Rochester and Orlando. Donatelli. For Roberts now, Tobin on the near side. Rosalind one touch. Jack Deusing is going to have to work hard for it, and working hard there, he fouls Rob Valentino off the ball. And Mike, you're right, it is Versailles who's coming off. Good call there. You know, you you, you saw on that one missed touch, and, and and Versailles done okay tonight, but that one missed touch, I guess Lily wants to change it up a little bit. Let's see what we could do in the center of the park to get a little bit more stuck in. That change will come up in the. Uh, Next few minutes here as Alvarez has it now. Valentino in his own half to Stewart on the far side. Stewart, the only or the first Jamaican to ever play in the Chinese Super League. Plays it forward for Olam. Now Alvarez with it. Good ball into space on this near side. Yustruck takes a touch. Coming forward now. Gets the ball back. 
from Molino. Takes a poor touch there, and he's going to lose possession and give up a goal kick to the Rochester Rhinos. 58th minute. Change coming on now. Tanky is on for Versailles, as Mike mentioned. Hoxie waiting for his opportunity to enter the match. Tanky, a, a young guy, rookie, out of the University of Rhode Island. But he's played six games this, this year, and now he's playing his seventh match, and he got an assist for the season. So that's it. I mean, it's a good rookie year. I mean, getting seven matches right off the bat. Takes his spot in the middle of the park. Valentino. His header, Tobin. Second header gets it to Rosenland. Supports him now. now drives it forward for Donatelli. It's off of his head and into the 18 where Gallardo coming off to the near side. Will scoop it up. Rather quiet night for the goalkeepers. Not called upon yet to make that one big save, but you see it so many times in soccer where they're doing the routine stuff and that one big one comes along. Tobin's header back into the Orlando half of the field. Alvarez, Molino, Olam. Now on the near side for Ustruck, who's finding some space here. Tobin dumping down Molino, and it'll be a free kick for Orlando City just inside their own half of the field. Orlando knocks the ball very nice. I mean, they, they keep possession. You can tell they play a lot of possession game in training. This one's sent into space. It's over Griffin's head. Bowden picks up the loose ball. Trainer, back to Bowden, working that far sideline. Bellamy will shield it out of bounds. And it'll be 60th minute, no score. Goal kick for the Rhinos. As the big smooth Andrew Hoxie is getting ready to come on. Now, does Jack Newson come off or does he partner up top with Hoxie? What are your thoughts on that, Coach? I'm, I'm thinking he's going to take out one of the midfielders. He's going to leave Jagdeo Singh in there. You, you like the speed of Jagdeo Singh. He, he's making good runs. When he gets the ball, he's possessing it. The one thing about Jagdeo Singh was he got the ball on the right side earlier tonight, and he was out up there by himself. And rather than trying to keep possession, he tried to take two guys on and then just, just laid it out to the goalie. So that's a little frustrating sometimes because he could be smarter and keep possession in the attacking third. He looked up and saw a wall of red. As Tobin will have a throw in here on the near sideline for the Rhinos who are playing their second of three in this homestand. Tobin's header, one hop and headed out of the air by Stewart. I mean, it could be Donatelli. Mike, you've been right on Versailles. We'll see if you're right on Donatelli as well and Donatelli versus Jagdiosin. Comes in hard with a good challenge there. And Mike, you're right. It is Donatelli who comes off. 62nd minute. Andrew Hoxie, the striker, on for the midfielder Donatelli. Mike, what happens now? Well, Hoxie's just going to fill that role. I mean, it's not a change of lineup. Hoxie's filling that withdrawn striker role. And it's going to be the, it's going to be the same formation in that 4-4-1-1, so to speak or a 4-5-1 with Hoxie as a withdrawn, or as an attacking midfielder, but more of a withdrawn striker, so that's why they would call it a 4-4-1-1. All right, Hoxie working with Jack Singh. We've got four lines in the game of soccer now instead of three, so you always gotta mix it up a little bit, and it really defines the, defines the formation a little bit more these days. There's J.C. Banks on the far side. He's been a little quiet here. In the second half, he was a bit of a terror in that first half. Hoxie, nice little move to flick it up and over the defender on the far side. But Stewart just using that body and the sideline to nudge off Andrew Hoxie. TJ Gore on the far side now. Pops it forward. Hoxie flicked on into space for Jagdiose. Corner flag on the far side. Valentino closing him down. But Jagdio Singh still fighting and wants a throw in deep in the Orlando half of the field. J.C. Banks 
He's got some distance on his throws. We'll take this one for the Rhinos. So both teams making two changes so far. This time Banks goes short to TJ Gore. Gore crossed into the box. Top of the 18, headed by Rosenlin. He pick up the header on the loose ball here. Tobin back to Rosenlin. Here's the Canadian midfielder, Tyler Rosenlin, scored his first goal last week. Playing it back to Roberts, and this is gonna go all the way back into the Rhinos' half of the field. And they'll start again. You know, Rosalind played 28 games last year with two goals and five assists, and I, I, he's, there's going to be a lot more of expected of him of this year. He's got one goal early in the season. He's got, he's got to start putting some more points on the board. Jack Diosing working hard, and he's called for the foul, maybe the little swipe there, as the referee didn't care for the, uh, the late swipe coming from the Renault striker, so it'll be a free kick for Orlando, who want to continue this Six game unbeaten streak for Rochester. Two games played on home turf. One nothing win, two nothing win. The teams looking to keep those val valuable points in the bank. Triple team, the Rhinos come away with it. It's behind Jag Singh. Stewart. With the boot up towards midfield. Bellamy with the nice header. Olam with the diving chest pass. Doesn't reach its target, but he does pick up the loose ball to Alvarez. Long ball now. A little short, short, long for Orlando. Tanky is run up the back by Neal. No cause. Rochester maintains possession. Tanky, quick little touch forward for Monte Galvan. Into space for Rosalind. Foot race for the ball with Ustra. Rosalind gets there first. Step over, tries to spin, turning the corner. Now a good ball for Tobin. One time into the box. No one there for the Rhinos. And cleared up to the middle of the field. Neal stripped of the ball there and a handball called. Looks like on Tanky. And it'll be a free kick for Orlando. So a great ball by Mato Gavon to Rosalind. And he, he runs that ball down. You struck him in a foot race. And then Rosalind does one, two, three, four moves. So you start doing your internal clock. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. You guys have already made the run. And the ball's not coming across. And all of a sudden, he lays it back to Tobin. Tobin makes a, makes a decent cross. But the guys have already made their runs. They've got to replenish their runs again. And that the Rhinos did not do. And that's what they're not doing when the, when the crosses are coming in late. This one will trickle through, and Molino lets it roll out of bounds, throwing for the Rhinos. 66th minute and scoreless. Orlando Rochester, their first ever meeting for these two sides. And Rosenland doesn't keep it in bounds. It'll be a throw in. And it looks like Tyler Rosenland holding his right hamstring. Trying to shake off maybe a little tightness in that right leg. Bob Lilly is yet to sit down in the second half. Going to push his team on and find one here. It's Gallardo. Miguel Gallardo moved to the United States in 2003. So, Joe, how about that merger of uh, indoor soccer? The MISL merges with the I-League. Should be interesting. How about that interesting? Should it be interesting. Should be interesting. I think that's great for indoor soccer, and uh, it's going to be another good thing for Rochester, New York, to have soccer year-round. Bit of a rivalry with uh, your hometown as well. It's not my hometown. It's where I live. Where you live now. That's where right. Where I live now. Syracuse, New the York. The place where you make your residence. Tommy Tanner is going to be the owner of the Syracuse team. And soccer Sam and Chris Wilmot running the show for the... Return of the Rochester Lancers, and boy, when you say that name, it brings back some, some great memories as I grew up at the old Hollander Stadium. And I'm gonna admit this now, Charlie Schiano, hopping over the fence, getting into the games. But those were the days at Hollander Stadium in the North American Soccer League. Actually, last night I spent time with both Tommy Tanner and Doug Miller. Doug Miller's under 18 boys played the uh, Empire United of Syracuse 18 boys. And I spent some time, had ice cream with Doug Miller last night. 
now in Syracuse, New York. You can't be having ice cream, Mike, if you're going to make a uh, go of it at the indoor. Well, game. I think Doug's trying to put some weight on me. Yeah. <laughs> Rumor is Doug Miller is coming back as Tobin is down, and this one's getting chippy here as Banks is going to call the attention of the official, and there was a push to the face by some of the players in that tangle there, and it's getting ugly here as the referee trying to separate the two sides. Tobin, he is still down, injury to his head, and love to see the replay on this whole thing as the referee blew the whistle right away. Valentino with Bellamy, they're talking. The yellow card is out, Mike, but don't know who is going to get it yet. The yellow card is for J.C. Banks. I mean, he, he went and cleats up. But you can see, you know, to Tobin, gets, Tobin gets hit, but it, it's not a flagrant elbow. It's not a flagrant elbow there by... Tobin is down, and he's getting immediate uh, attention from the trainer as there's a lot of things that happen on the play. It started off with the header in the air that Tobin went for. He took, I think it was an elbow or a, a hand to the face. The referee talking to his fourth official and assistant on the near side. So there may be more cards issued here in the 70th minute. As it was a bit of chaos there after the, uh, the contact to the face of Connor Tobin. All right, so yellow card goes to J.C. Banks in the 70th minute. Yellow card goes to Valentino as well. Both these cards in minute number 70. Banks for the challenge. Valentino probably for the shenanigans after the play. As Tobin uh, with the ice. And it looks like he's got uh, some blood coming out of the nose as well. So now Rochester is going to play with 10 men for a bit. Yeah, you, I mean, you could see Molino goes up, and he's just got his arms out, and, and that's part of the match. And you, you always learn to get your arms up when you're going up for a header. And Molino did not do it flagrantly, I, I don't believe. I mean, looking from this angle, I don't believe he did it flagrantly. And, and Tobin just got the elbow, and it wasn't a flagrant elbow. It, it was just you get your arms up whenever you go up for a header, and you're protecting yourself. And it, it's for balance and protecting yourself, and that's what we teach all the kids today. And you, you, you learn it your whole life, and he's just getting up there to get more height. Tobin, a tough cookie, 24 years old. He's played in Norway. They haven't made the change yet, so maybe Tobin is going to stay on. You know, then you got Molino, who's got some experience playing for Trinidad Tobago national team. Going up with his elbows. And Intercepted here by Hoxie, a two-on-one break, possibly no. Olam takes him down. He'll be booked. That's a yellow card. You, you, that's a yellow card for sure. And, and the refs got to get control of this match a little bit. 71st minute Olam taking down the streaking Andrew Hoxie. And Daniel Radford, the referee, extremely busy here in the last five minutes, Mike. You know, and, and you know, Hoxie's off here, but you can see that Olam's got the speed on Hoxie. Hoxie, very, very de deceptive the way he plays, but Olam's got the speed. Why would Olam make that foul? Sometimes you want to say, okay, that's a professional foul. The guy's on a break, but I don't think Olam needed to make that foul. That's a bad yellow card by Olam. So a free kick for the Rhinos in the Orlando half of the field. We'll see who... Uh, looks like it's going to be Hamilton coming on for Rochester. Montegalvan serves it into the 18. Gallardo will win the ball, but a foul call for a push inside the Orlando box. So maybe he's not going to come back on as Anthony Hamilton is the player who's going to check in. 11 v 10 right now for Orlando. You struck to Olam. Here's Bowden on the near side for Molino on turf. No, on grass, maybe. Mike Tobin is going to stay. Look at this. Good to see him fight this off. He's got the nose packed. And Connor Tobin showing what a fighter he is. Good stuff from Connor Tobin. Guy's a stud. Good to see him back on the pitch. That was a nasty Nasty shot right to the nose, and he's back taking the throw in. There's J.C. Banks. Can he create the magic again for the Rhinos? Jag Diosing forcing Stewart back to Gallardo. His first touch was a little scary, but 
Able to put it into the Rhinos half of the field. Olam to Molino. Neal spinning, turning. Good stick there from Tobin. Middle of the park though, Molino with the loose ball into the 18 for Griffin. There's the quick little flick on the outside for Ustruck and no one there but you know, Neil Kitson. You know, even there, that ball's bouncing perfectly for, for Molino. I mean, one time it with your left peg. I, I mean, why not take a shot on, on it's bounced perfect. I really thought he was gonna try to try to crack it, but laid it off to Griffin to his chest, and it's that's not the ideal play. Molino knocked off the ball. Good shoulder challenge there as Mochagavan came in hard with the body. Thanks. Fancy footwork here, avoids one, and the second one takes him down. As the fans getting restless, looking for more cards to come out as it's gotten chippy here in the second half. It's not the really. flow has kind of died out. I guess pockets of, of physical play. Well, you can see the Rhinos have three guys up top right now. They're putting a lot of pressure on the backs of Orlando, making them play, making them play out of their game, which is to knock the ball and keep possession. Orlando hasn't been keeping possession as much as half. They're playing long ball, and the Rhinos are forcing that. Hoxie knocked off the ball. Alvarez has it now. Bowden. Outside. Trainer. For Bowden. Tobin again. Not afraid to get in there with the header. One and two. Good job. Olam. Alvarez to Bowden. A little triangle. They'll open up this to Stewart on the far side. 75th minute, will there be a goal in the final 15 minutes? Hoxie and Stewart chasing this ball down. Anthony Hamilton has made his way over to the scorer's table, the fourth official's table, I'm sorry. You struck with it. Roberts, good, strong, physical walk through there on Neal. Looks like number eight, Tyler Rosalind, will be coming off. For Anthony Hamilton. There's a throw in here for Orlando. Anthony I, Hamilton coming on, Mike, in the 76th. Yeah, and I, li I like that move by Coach Lilly. Let's change the game a little bit. We're at home. Let's try to get the win here. You're putting a little bit more pressure up top where Rosalind was just really slowing the game down at times. So now hopefully Hamilton can put a little bit more pressure up top and go forward more with the ball. A ton of pace, a ton of energy. He's got 14 minutes to do something. Rosalind's gonna get the ice on the back of the right leg as he put in an honest effort this evening. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, not a bad match by Rosalind, but there's gonna be more expected of him after after last last season, playing 28 games, having two goals, five assists, you want to see four goals, ten assists from a guy like Tyler Rosenlin this year. Another one of those UC Santa Barbara products, along with Monto Galvan. Valentino with it now. Now you've got another guy in there, Hamilton, who's going to be more expected of him this year as well. Last year, 28 games, five goals, one assist. Let's see if we can get seven, eight goals this year out of Hamilton. JC Banks. Good job, just to fight and keep the ball for Rochester. On the far side, Hamilton was coming in. Toxy went out, and it'll be a throw in for Orlando. 77 minutes in. Stewart. You can see how high the Rhinos are right now. They are putting pressure on the back four, not allowing, not allowing Orlando City to play easily out of the back. There's a pocket of space for Alvarez, though, to come forward. Molino, one on one, cross into the box. Gore with the header. Montegalvan with the clearance, middle of the park. Lawrence Olam. Neal. Changing it to the far side, and that's bad work there from Trainer. Let's that one slip through. Looks like Drew Cost is going to come in also for Rochester. 
as Tanky chips it in the air. It's over Hoxie's head. Olam heading it forward now for Lewis Neal. Olam will knock it all the way back into his own half where Miguel Gallardo picks it up. Little touch forward for Stewart who came on in the 51st minute for the injured Kieran Bernard. Bernard still uh, sitting next to the trainer. Ice just below that right eye as he has got uh, quite the wealth there. You know, since Tobin's gotten knocked in the nose there, he's won every single head ball. <laughs> A lot of guys would shy away, but he is, uh, he's got uh, a good interception by Jagdius, and he's come right back for more in the air. Tobin. Montegalvan to Jagdio Singh. He's pushed down. Referee says play on. Alvarez has the ball for Orlando. Neal, good touch forward for Griffin. Back to Neal. Dead center, 40 yards out on his left foot. Lays it on the outside. Trainers overlapping. Crosses with the left foot. It's over Griffin. And Tobin, backside, clears it for the Rhinos. Tanky on the ground. Gets a piece of that ball. Comes to TJ Gore now. 80th minute. No goals yet. Rochester in Orlando. Good job by Valentino. Calm, cool, off the chest. Here's Olam. Alvarez. Drew Cost is going to be coming on. Cost showed well last week against Antigua. It, you know, and it's important for a player to come off the bench if that's your role on the team for either that night or for the season to come off the bench and make an impact. And I think Drew Cost did that last yeah, he week. He sure did. Good stuff from the uh, the number three, Drew Cost, the 22-year-old. And this one will just go out of bounds over the end line. So he's going to replace Alfonso Montegalvan. And this change, Mike, is in the 80th minute. So for Drew Cost, his fourth appearance of the year. Alfonso Montegalvan comes off his sixth appearance of the year. So Cost, 22 years old. Draft pick of Real Salt Lake. Played his college soccer at Penn State. All right, 81 minutes in, Rochester has gone to the bench four times. Tanky, Hoxie, Hamilton, and Cost. You know, you're hoping for that benefit on July 23rd that Mano Gavan is, is uh, one of the bachelors because you hear the fans screaming, I love you, Alfonso, I love you, Alfonso. So July 23rd at Monroe's in <laughs> Monroe's Pitt Pittsburgh. Starts at 5.30, free appetizers and dessert. Well, you say free, but it's a $20.00. $20 $20 cost, pre-sale, $25 at the door. And all proceeds are going to Wilmot Cancer Center at Strong. Great to see Joe Mercic give back like that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 First class. it's uh, yeah, top, top class. Joe's always been a classy player. Classy on the field, off the field. There's Cost. His first touch goes outside to Hamilton. And we're, we're all very, very glad to see that Joe's a cancer survivor, testicular cancer in November, and uh, finished chemo in February. Here's Gore wiggling in and out. He gets knocked off the ball. Alvarez has it now for Lewis Neal. Olam cuts it around. Like what Lewis Neal is brought to the table tonight. Is that one just a little too far for Olam? Yeah, actually a colleague of mine from New England Revolution, very, very, the Revolution, very interested in Neil. There's Hoxie's off the chest inside the 18. Didn't mean to cut you off there, but Trainer coming over from the far side. But who's playing that ball again? And it's J.C. Banks with a beautiful ball right onto the chest of Hoxie. And unfortunately, you've got two defenders from Orlando City who closed Hoxie down very, very well. I don't know what else Hoxie could have done with that because the two Orlando City players did very well closing Hoxie down. Corner kick from the near side. Cost sends it in. The header still at the six. Through traffic and Gallardo just coming out through the crowd able to scoop that one up. And a good ball by Cost and Hamilton coming in and crashing and getting his head on it. 
Bodies flying all over the place. And Orlando able to breathe just a bit easier after not giving one up there. Gallardo's long boot downfield is headed by Bellamy. Hamilton off the top of his head and out of bounds. So Joe, it's a bachelor auction, auction and they're hoping Mano Gavon is a single guy as they all scream, I love you, Alfonso. That's why he's called Fonzie. Fonzie. He's the man with the ladies. Good guy. Great off guy. of the turf, out on the town with the Rhinos. Valentino, you struck. Tanky gets the loose ball to J.C. Banks. Left foot across, and that's one of the few that Banks sends off the boot and out of bounds. And Frank Aleski is going to make his first appearance as a Rochester Rhino. 24-year-old be coming on. Rookie at this level. The first or the uh, fourth and final change. Another Long Island guy, played at Queens College, Long Island University. We like those Long Island guys. I haven't seen him in game action since the preseason, and uh, he's a workhorse. He brings a ton of energy. And a few minutes to have a run here. As he's going to replace J.C. Banks. Sure if Banks has an injury, but he has the ball on his chest. Still with it, Banks, and it's knocked away by Olam. Tobin and Jagdio Singh looking for a combination. Can't work it out. Tanky's ball backwards is intercepted by Griffin. Griffin with five goals this year is taken down and it'll be a free kick as Tanky brings down Griffin. Tied for first in the USL Pro with five goals. You know, once again, right there, Tanky's got, has Griffin on the sideline. Just contain him, just keep him there. Don't let him go anywhere. You got, he, it was similar when Jagdio Singh was 1v2 there. Griffin was 1v2 on, the, on that side as well. Looks like Tobin's coming over to the sideline again. The blood may be uh, trickling out as he's being sent off by the official. Not a good time to have Tobin off the no. pitch. He's been winning all the headers, and this is a standard situation that Orlando City has an opportunity with Tobin not on the pitch. 86th minute, Frank Alessi is on. So Alessi, the 24-year-old, is on now. Free kick for Neal and Orlando on the near side. Whipped into the box. Headed straight up in the air and over his own goal by Roberts. Corner kick here in the 86th minute. Another dangerous ball by Neal. He's done a good job tonight. Good, uh, good player to watch. Very entertaining. One of the better players on the pitch tonight. 29, and they're looking at, and, and you've got the New England Revolution looking at him. He's got a lot of experience in, the, in, in England. There's his service through traffic. The punch by Kitson. The volley not through traffic there. Good effort though by Alvarez. Blocked in the crowd. Yeah, good save by Kitson there. Neil wants to get Neil wants to get that ball between the six and twelve. Once again, though, deja vu. There, there's Alvarez striking the ball and lacing it once again and blocked by the Rhinos. Yeah, he's hit him nice uh, one time out of the air. So let's see, free kick again, foul called on Hamilton that time on the far side. This one near the sideline, about 40 yards out on the far side, whipped into the box. Headed again by Roberts. Cost is there. His clearance is blocked. And straight up in the air. I mean, you go across that back four for the Rhinos, Bellamy, Gore, Roberts, Tobin. It's, it's tough to beat those guys in the air. Very strong physical presence with those back four. Oxy in a tight space, still working hard. Hamilton, his poke ends up on the foot of Griffin. Griffin is dumped. And referee makes the call there as Orlando late in the game, Mike, are getting some restarts. And this could amount to something. We'll see how it, uh, it plays up here as a free kick on the far side. Neal 
and Alvarez discussing who will take it. As we have a look at the Rynettes, for those of you watching on TV and USL Live, hope the fans watching down in Orlando enjoying our coverage of Rhino Soccer on USL Live, produced by John Catalano. There's Alvarez, one-timer, and served wide of that near post. A little ambitious by Alvarez there. As some of the uh, off-field festivities continue here at Salem Stadium. It looks like someone is stuck on that rock climbing wall. Doesn't want to go up or down. Hoxie. <laughs> Probably the best view in the house. T.J. Gore trying to turn on the Jets and turn the corner on Bowden. And he can't, and it'll be a goal kick for Orlando. Good physical challenge it both ways. Yeah, Bowden does a good job, though, just shielding, shielding Gore off. Shield, Gore's obviously a faster player there. Bowden does a very good shielding him off and preventing Gore from getting a corner kick there. So for Orlando, six games. No defeats. First one came earlier in the season to Richmond. You know, like seeing I like seeing Gore two games in a row getting the start. He, he does a, he does a good job on that outside right midfield. He gets forward. He's a strong. He's strong. He's got speed. He's versatile. Can play in the back. Can play in the midfield. He's do, been doing a pretty good job tonight. Well deserved uh, start and playing time for T.J. Gore. You don't see a lot of players from the University of Vermont playing in this league. It's tanky. His header is intercepted by Orlando. Hamilton, looks like it's going to be called for a handball. And Mike, another one, 90th minute, another free kick here. Coming up for Orlando. Neal over the ball with Alvarez, putting some numbers into the box now. As we're going to have four minutes of stoppage time. You got Molino there in the center of the park. He's going to put it in against the big Rhinos. And that, 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 that's, I don't think that's the best decision by Orlando City. And the shortest man in the field, Tanky, was the one who got the header at it to clear it away. <laughs> the ball didn't even get into the Rhinos 18. As Alvarez left a bit. Uh, the restart wasn't. The restart. It wasn't a good restart. Not at all. I think you need to put Neil on every ball. He's been, he's been really putting them in there nicely. Stewart. Roberts with the header. Alessi. Tanky. His clearance is only to the foot of Stewart. Now Neil. Tobin. Injury or not, he's worked hard coming back from that bloody nose. Good ball forward for Hoxie. In the air for Jagdio Singh, top of the 18. Stewart has it straight up in the air, you struck. And then Olam will clear it up to midfield. Stoppage time, four minutes called for. Stewart gets the scissor kick away. And Trainer, good job there. And the slide tackle wins the throw, and we'll say that the Rhinos touched it last. And Orlando has a throw in. There's going to be a yellow card issue to T.J. Gore in the 90th minute. Not happy with that call, obviously. Sixth yellow card of the game. Valentino. This ball's into space for Jagdio Singh. Gallardo is off his line. He'll play it safe and just clear it over into the bench on the near sideline. Played about uh, two minutes of stoppage time. They called for four. Hoxie trying to work it into the 18. Valentino will clear it for Orlando. You know, before the match, one of the things that Ian Fuller told me was that Orlando City, Orlando City needed to finish, and I don't think they really had the opportunities to finish. They've been struggling finishing, it, but they really didn't get a lot of opportunities. When they did get those opportunities, they didn't finish tonight. Yeah, it, it, it's been a quiet night for 
for Gallardo, for Kitson. Besides a few crosses to deal with, neither one has had to be spectacular tonight. And the other thing that they really needed to do was get Griffin isolated and get him 1v1. And the Rhinos did a good job not letting Griffin be isolated one-on-one -on -one with, with either Bellamy or Roberts. 93 minutes in, and it's been a quiet night for Griffin. But those are the strikers you hear about. 93 minutes and nothing. And then the last 10 seconds of the game, boom, back of the net. Let's hope that's not the case for Griffin tonight. Trainer. His service gets over the head of Tanky. Molino on the near side. This could be the one last rush for the Rhinos. No, nope, it's behind Alessi. Just kicked back into the Rhinos half of the field where Kitson. The Rhinos 18 where Kitson will boot it downfield. So maybe time for one more push. It's off the shoulder of Alessi and out of bounds. Approaching the fourth minute of stoppage time. Scoreless. Rochester and Orlando. Oxy to Tanky. Hamilton lays it off for Cost. And he just pushes it forward. A bit of desperation there, but not sure how much time is left. And Gallardo will try and see this one off at zeros. And that'll do it. Daniel Radford blows the whistle. Four minutes of stoppage time played. And the final score tonight from Salem Stadium, Rochester and Orlando are scoreless. Stick around, post-game wrap coming up next on the Rhinos Broadcast Network.